So we are going to talk about some special cases of surface integrals that allow us to simplify our calculations. When we're looking at a surface, we can describe it using a vector valued function r of two variables u and v. Once we do that, to calculate the surface integral, the cross product r sub u cross r sub v is a very important part of actually getting to our final answer. So we're going to talk about a few ways that we can shortcut this cross product. And the situations we're going to talk about in this video are specifically when our two variables of the parametrization are x and y. So let's say for the first case that we have some vector valued function r of x and y, which is given by x, y, and some function z of x and y. This is what we get if our surface is described by some function, for example, z equals x squared plus y squared minus 4. Some function where z is given by x and y. In that case, we can easily parametrize it using the variables x and y and plug in the formula for z. From there, we want to find the cross product r sub x cross r sub y. So let's see what that would look like in the case that we're looking at here. We know that r sub x is going to be the partial derivative of each of these components with respect to x. So the partial of x with respect to x is 1. Partial of y with respect to x is just 0. And then for our function z, we're going to have z sub x, the partial derivative of z with respect to x. r sub y is going to look very similar. The derivative of x with respect to y is 0, of y with respect to y is 1, and then we're going to have z sub y. Now we can plug these two vectors into our cross product, r sub x cross r sub y. For that cross product, that's going to be this determinant here, where we've plugged in r sub x as the second row and r sub y as the third row. From there, we can expand this determinant along the first row of these vectors, i, j, and k. So we get i times 0 times z sub y is 0, and we do minus z sub x. Then we're going to do minus j times 1 times z sub y is just z sub y, minus z sub x times 0 is just 0, and then we're going to do plus k times 1 times 1 is 1, and then minus 0. If we turn this back into a vector, the x component is negative z sub x, the y component is negative z sub y, and the z component is just 1. So this is a formula for r sub x cross r sub y. It's a very simple formula that we can always plug in when we have a parametrization in terms of x and y. As an example, let's say we were looking at the surface described by the function z equals 9 minus 2x squared plus xy. In that case, r sub x cross r sub y is going to be first the partial of z with respect to x. Well, that's going to be negative 4x and then plus the derivative of xy with respect to x is just y. So we have negative of this partial, then negative the partial with respect to y is just going to be the derivative of xy with respect to y, which is x, and then we have 1 as our third component. So if we expanded this negative through, this vector would be our cross product r sub x cross r sub y. All we had to do was take the partial derivatives. Now the next shortcut that we're going to look at is an even more general version of this formula. Instead of having some function z in terms of x and y, let's say we were looking at a surface defined by f of x, y, z equals c for some function f. For example, the top half of a sphere is given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals r squared for z greater than or equal to 0. And in this case, r squared is a constant. So we have a function of x, y, and z equal to a constant. And there's a shortcut here to find this cross product. We can actually do it without ever solving for any parametrization. In order to do that, we're going to start by assuming that there is some parametrization for our surface in terms of x and y. Note that that means there actually has to be some function z of x, y that describes the surface. So the surface has to represent a function. 
That's why we're looking at the top half of a sphere. If we were looking at the entire sphere, then for every x and y, there would be two different z values, one positive and one negative, that would satisfy this function. So we wouldn't be able to do a parametrization of the surface. Since we know that this parametrization exists, we also know that the cross product is going to be of this form, negative z sub x, negative z sub y, and 1. So all we need to do is find these partial derivatives z sub x and z sub y using our function. And we're going to do that in a little sneaky way using partial derivatives. Let's look at what happens if we take our equation f of x, y, z equals c, which we know is true for every point along the surface, and take the partial derivative with respect to x on both sides. So we have the partial with respect to x of our function equals the partial with respect to x of c. So what are we going to get? Well, on the left, we know first of all that we're going to have the partial of f with respect to x. But that's not the only thing we're going to have. Because remember that we're changing the value of x. And y is independent of x. So it's not going to affect the value of y. But z is a function of x and y. That's how we defined our parametrization. So if changing x changes the value of z, that might also affect our original function f. So we're going to take f sub x, and we're going to add f sub z times z sub x. What this is saying is, if changing x causes z to change by some amount, we need to multiply that by how much f is affected by that change in z. That's this partial derivative. So adding these two together will give us how much that final function f is affected by the change in x. Now this is equal to the partial derivative of c, which is just 0. And now we just need to solve for z sub x. If we do that, we're going to get that it equals negative f sub x over f sub z. And we can do this exact same process over again, but starting with the derivative with respect to y. If we do that, everything is going to stay the same, except instead of x, we're going to have y. And that means z sub y is negative f sub y over f sub z. From here, we can take these equations and plug them straight into the formula for the cross product. We know that it's going to equal negative the partial of z with respect to x. Well, this negative and negative are going to cancel out. So we'll have a positive f sub x over f sub z. With z sub y, it's going to be the same thing. Negative and negative will cancel. And we'll have f sub y over f sub z. And then finally, we're going to write 1 as f sub z over f sub z. Now we can take out 1 over f sub z from every part of this vector. And that's going to leave us with the vector f sub x, f sub y, f sub z. And this is a very familiar vector because it is equal to the gradient of the function f. So 1 over f sub z times the gradient of f will give us the cross product r sub x cross r sub y. As an example, let's say we wanted to find r sub x cross r sub y for the top half of our sphere. In that case, we need to find the gradient of our function f, where f is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's going to be the partial with respect to x, which is 2x. Then the partial with respect to y is 2y. Partial with respect to z is 2z. So r sub x cross r sub y is going to be 1 over f sub z times the gradient of f. We know that f sub z is 2z. So we're going to divide each of the parts of this vector by 2z. That's going to give us, for the x component, 2x over 2z is x over z. And then 2y over 2z is y over z. And of course, 2z over 2z gives us 1, just like we had in this original formula. So this is r sub x cross r sub y if our surface is the top half of a sphere. And if we wanted to do our integral with respect to the parameters x and y, we could plug this straight into our surface integral and get to calculating. So those are two easy shortcuts that we can use when we want to do our integral with respect to the parameters x and y. That could either be because our original surface is described in terms of some function z of x, y. 
in which case we can use this formula to skip all the cross product stuff, or because our surface is defined by some function f of x, y, and z being equal to a constant. In that case, we can use 1 over f sub z times the gradient of f to give us our cross product.